Hello! In this video I will share with you the MOOC CLIL project, which is the massive open online course project together with the Content Language Integrated Learning project. This combination of using MOOCs and content provided in a different non-native language is quite unique at this point in time and it's running in one of the biggest uh, Belgian secondary schools in Belgium, in the city of Kortrijk. The school is called Gulden Sporen College and consists of multiple campuses. And the target population for this type of mooc project were or are 16 to 17 year old students in secondary school. Now for this project, we managed to get together three innovatively minded teachers, uh, all of them language teachers. One is a French teacher and the two others are English teachers. And the directors of, this, of both campuses agreed to try this mooc project. I am the principal and currently only researcher on the project, so we participatively set out the architecture of the project and I will show you what it basically meant. Now I want you to think about something. So you have the challenges, critical thinking, digital literacy, digital skills, and self-regulated learning leading to lifelong learning. How would you tackle these challenges with 16 to 17 year olds? Just imagine. And imagine also your current secondary school architecture. Is it possible? So how did we tackle these challenges? We tackled them by looking at gaps in the existing mandatory curriculum. There was a small segment of time called vrije ruimte, which means free space inside the secondary school curriculum, which enables teachers and directions of schools to provide a different type of innovative approach, to test it out and to see whether it can mean something or it adds something to the rest of the curriculum. So we took those two hours per week and we said we're going to use these two hours for one complete academic year and we are going to scaffold the students, the 16 to 17 year olds, which is the upper secondary school uh, levels, and take them on a journey, which will provide them with self-regulated learning skills, digital literacy and digital skills, as well as like a motivational boost to know where they will be heading personally or professionally in the future. So we set out three phases for this project. First, a phase where we explain what MOOCs are. You have different platforms, you have different possible interactions, and each one of these interactions was first tested inside of the trusted environment inside the classroom. Why? Because we wanted to enhance their language skills. If you don't feel comfortable conversing with people you don't know, even with people you know, then it's going to be difficult to really interact in a MOOC, any type of MOOC in any type of language. So we said, OK, we're going to first try out all these uh, options to communication inside of the classroom. At the same time, each of the, the teachers provided the students with online language tools. So they could uh, look up certain words they didn't understand, or they could uh, find words that they wanted to use. So in both directions. This meant they were in control of their own language learning, because language was just a part of the course. Now, in order to see whether they actually improved on the language scale, we made a small scale of ourselves that each one of the teachers used with their students. It was just uh, five items related to language on which they would get some grades. And the grades were not on correct grammar use, that's not uh, important. No, it's daring to speak, it's listening, comprehension, 
it's uh, actually feeling becoming more openly uh, accustomed to the language. And then we added five extra items to this scale, which we used for grading. And those were related to digital skills as well as learning skills. This way we could see, we could track throughout the year whether they improved or not, because those were the skills or the challenges we wanted to face or we wanted to find answers to. After that first phase in the introduction of MOOCs and getting them ready to use language in a different, more practical way, we started with the own MOOC. Now, in the first phase, the introduction with MOOCs, they needed to follow a MOOC in group. So it was a classical uh, MOOC that was chosen by the teacher just to get them accustomed with all the different aspects of MOOCs. After that section, where the teachers gave a lot of support, the own MOOC started. Own MOOC phase was a phase where the children or the students could choose their own MOOC and go through the MOOC themselves. This meant <clears throat> that as, uh, from a teacher's side, all of a sudden they didn't provide that much support anymore just because they couldn't. I mean, they weren't the content experts uh, of those MOOCs, but they were the guides on the side they were able to help the students if they faced some trouble uh, along the way during the MOOC learning process. And then the third phase was a production phase, like an enhanced digital technology phase, where the students were asked to, to make a movie, to add some assignments like uh, you would in MOOCs, and to provide some interactions or some questions that Others who watched the movie, who took a look at the assignment, would want to reflect upon. Why? Because that was really like wrapping up the, the whole process, or that was our theoretical approach once we made the plan for the whole academic year. Now, at present, the students are in the third phase. They are building their MOOCs. They are going to share those MOOCs with next year's students who then can decide whether or not they volunteer for that type of uh, project again. Now, of course, any new project has the potential of genius in them. In this case, it was the same. I mean, before we started the project, we all thought the teachers, the directors and myself, that it would be brilliant. But of course, once you start a project, you can see the ch new challenges arise. One of the challenges was the French MOOC challenge. The French MOOCs aren't um, as diverse as the English MOOCs, which meant that the teacher at a certain point decided to only use MOOCs that were already MOOCs aiming at secondary school students. But those weren't really full-blown MOOCs. Those were more media, uh, I mean, movies, short movies on specific subjects, and then the discussion, but nothing really as interactive, not as massive as the English MOOCs. This meant that students who were following the French MOOC talked to the English uh, MOOC student uh, group and they saw that their interactions weren't the same. Now, these French uh, MOOC followers, or the students of the project, asked the teacher, why don't we do the same thing? We want to do more. We want to interact more with students from around the world. We want to do more stuff. We want to try softwares out, all of the same things as the other, the English MOOC students were doing. So just imagine, that you have a 16, 17 year old class and students actually ask to do more work. That, that's a big deal. The only thing was, we were kind of stuck. So next year, we're going to only focus on the English MOOCs. Is that a good decision? From a language diversity perspective, it isn't. But to, if you look at digital skills and self-regulated uh, learning, it's a good thing because all of the students did mention that they managed to time their learning much better now than at the start of the project. And they do it on an uh, autonomous basis. 
They were in charge of their learning schedule. They decided which MOOC to follow. They decided which part of the MOOCs they would follow. So it's much more their responsibility. And of course, the teachers are there to see whether or not they are actually learning something, what they are doing, and whether they are critical enough with the content that is provided in these MOOCs. And that is where the adult teacher really comes in, because there is this discussion, ah, let every learner decide for themselves, no matter what age they will pull it off. If you look at the project that we are doing, you can clearly see that students don't have the same experience yet as the teachers. And of course, I admit that teachers have an enormous big bullshit detector. If a MOOC is provided by facilitators that actually don't know their field or their discipline that well, a teacher will know in an instant. Young people still have to get this experience of sifting through what is good quality, what is less quality, or whether or not something is really evidence-based or not. So this is really important that the teacher is still monitoring everything because they can provide skills that will last a lifetime. So I hope this provides some kind of insight in the project that we have. And please look at the, well, I provided the keynote and some papers on the project. And we are, and I also provide some links to instruments that we are using. One of the instruments actually measures the motivation, the self-esteem of the students throughout the project, so which is a big benefit because we all know that motivation, intrinsic motivation and self-esteem make up a lot of learning success. And so be free to start something similar. Contact me because I'm always into any type of collaboration. I really like the uh, open exchange of ideas. And let me know how you're doing as well. See you.